Hello everyone and welcome to some testing in Realism Overhaul Sandbox as I've created Realism Overhaul configurations for KK Launcher's ITS system, the Interplanetary Transport System that was designed by SpaceX and I want to try out the mod in Realism Overhaul. So uh, there are quite a lot of caveats to this. Uh, it is far from a finished product and especially because the mod is made in 1.2, but right now we only have Realism Overhaul in KSP 1.1.3, so I've had to, uh, at least with the RCS, make some some concessions, uh, and I'll talk about that in a bit. But let's start from the bottom and work our way up. Uh, there are three rings of engines on the core stage, uh, so we've got the Raptor Inner Circle, Raptor Outer Circle, and then for some reason they end up in fuel tanks when it's in 1.1.3 I hope it's in the right category in 1.2 but then uh, the Raptor Center cluster here and the stats should be spot on as far as these are concerned the only question is the ignitions and perhaps the gimbal range but you can see liquid methane liquid oxygen burning and uh, the thrust should be correct the ISP should be correct um, then there's only really a question about, oh, the mass is a question mark, mass is a question mark, ignitions is a question mark, and gimbling is a question mark. So those are things that I do not know. Work in progress, see? So yes, that is, uh, that is all set there, at least as far as I can get it. The fuel tank, I have loaded with as much fuel as I thought would be reasonable. Uh, it's three minutes and two seconds worth of fuel given the engines and we do have a little smart part on that I slapped on which will reserve 10% of the fuel for return and landing though we're not going to test the landing part just yet I just want to make sure it all gets to orbit uh, but methane and oxygen in the proper mix um, the way I determined how much to put in was well we it, it was supposed to be 10,500 tons altogether and so I put in as much as I could while maintaining a decent sea level thrust to weight ratio. Um, so that's how we got to 10,035. Technically some documents uh, say that it only has um, a gross mass, the tank has a gross mass of 7, uh, 6,750 tons. Uh, right now we're at about 750 tons more than that, but we're still under the specified maximum liftoff. Uh, mass, so I think we're all right. I I forget how many grid fins there are. I think there might have been three. I put four. We have RCS ports here, and so I've configured the RCS ports to use methane and oxygen. They have a uh, a burn thrust of 4.0, and I've decided to give them 316 vacuum ISP, though that's probably much less than that, since I think it just shoots out. Uh, gaseous methane and oxygen and not the not actually igniting them but it'd be really helpful to have uh, higher thrust and higher ISP on these though they'll never get anything particularly good at well I don't know maybe their sea level is better right now I've got it configured as if it was a vacuum engine but uh, maybe their sea level is doable so we've got that and um, the thing about that is in 1.1.3 you'd have to actually edit the original configurations in order to get the RCS to work properly because RCS works differently in 1.2 it's got the nice little puffs and all right um, in 1.1.3 it didn't work the same way and so I can't do that from an external configuration to change that or at least I don't think I can um, I'll toy around with that in the config files but uh, if you use the configuration 1.2 there's no problem uh, it's only in 1.1.3 that the RCS might be a little bit of a problem. Anyway, um, the inner stage actually has a controller on it, so that's handy if you want to try and return stuff. Uh, though I don't know, I don't think it's going to be uh, remote tech compatible. I'll add a remote tech compatibility thing on it eventually. Um, yeah, right now. Uh, I, I did add a remote tech compatibility for the ship, just not for this part. Okay, so we take that off, and we see three Raptor sea level engines properly configured, and uh, six Raptor vacuum engines, no gimbling. Uh, the only ones that gimbal are the center ones. I had to put these little cylinders here to extend them out. Actually, I want, um, uh, one of the problems with the ship 
portion is it's got 100 seats so it's a little bit hard to do this when you have um, KIS in here this is produced by Kerbal Inventory System um, what I wanted to do was actually on these tank no um, these tanks yeah I want to turn them black so that they don't show up so much yeah so now it's not quite so obvious all right uh, there are uh, little body flaps here now the way they work is either they retract uh, they're basically air brakes that's not quite what I think I want from body flaps but I'll take it for now um, in particular uh, I mean it's mainly I feel it's supposed to help with maintaining pitch but um, like I said I'll take it for now uh, especially because there's no way this is gonna survive re-entry anyway the reason it won't survive re-entry is because it's not balanced you see this whole thing is one part and so since it's all one part eventually it's going to want to go the wrong way it's gonna to want to go tail first instead of uh, front first through the atmosphere I made sure that there's 1,950 tons of fuel, which is what it was advertised to be. So we take the, those out. Okay, well, right now we have 468 tons here displayed, but what you don't see listed here, if I could get this darn thing. Come on. Uh, okay, what you don't see is that I've put 300 tons of lead ballast. So the empty mass of this is 168 tons. The unfortunate part is that 168 tons ends up in the center, uh, or somewhat offset, depending on how that uh, is in the script, so in the configuration. I think it, is, it does have a small uh, center mass offset, but it's not the right amount to counterbalance everything for realism overall. So I'll have to tweak that. Uh, but the point is that for the real ITS it's going to need to shift the center of mass during the whole thing. It'll have the center of mass in one place while it's uh, going through the atmosphere on re-entry and then for landing it has to sh move the center of mass back uh, so that lands on its tail, right? Uh, with the, It does have the lander legs so um, mm, this thing uh, has a uh, Fortunately, you don't have this long dialogue when you're actually on a mission. That's just right now. But anyway, lower legs. It has lander legs, thanks to KK. Uh, Kartoffel Kuchin uh, has produced this particular model. So we've got landing legs. But yeah, I need some way of moving the center of mass. Also, uh, I need some way of sneaking in more food, water, and oxygen because right now we don't have enough for 100 people. With 100 people, it'll only have enough for four hours. The thing to solve all this is if uh, this forward portion could be a different part than the rest of this. If this forward portion was a different part, I could sneak some mass over here, uh, perhaps some lead even, uh, but you know, just food, water, and oxygen might do the trick in order to uh, keep it oriented properly and then move that mass back when necessary. Also, uh, the tank in here is currently configured as balloon cryo which can take certain things but it can't take food, water, and oxygen. You need a service module tank to put the food, water, and oxygen in or a life support tank and we, I can configure this four portion as one of those tanks, the uh, service module or life support and leave this as balloon cryo. Uh, we need blue and cryo because uh, that's the only thing that comes close to simulating the lightweight tanks that uh, SpaceX will actually use. So, yeah, not much of an option there. Anyway, uh, other than that, uh, this is basically 300 tons of cargo, 168 tons of structure, and then uh, 1,950 tons of, of fuel which is what it's supposed to be. So that's good. And uh, so we can simulate bringing the cargo up like that. All right, so that's, that's how the numbers work. So what are the problems with this? Well, I'll talk about that on the way up. For now, we'll save and launch. Okay, so here we are. And uh, thankfully, the mod makes it easy on me because the scale of it is correct already. Uh, I think you can tell. Uh, yeah, so I didn't need to rescale it. Rescaling parts uh, and moving around the, 
the attachment nodes is the most annoying part of trying to configure something for realism overhaul as far as I can tell. So I've already got a launch script uh, and it's the same launch script that I used for my ITS video. You know, when I made the ITS, you know, my uh, feeble attempt to make one, uh, I made the rocket profile video on it and I had the KOS script for that. So I'm just going to use the same script. In theory, it should work just fine. Maybe it won't be the most efficient profile, but hey. So let's have it do its thing. And along the way, I get to talk. So the only engines that gimbal are the center cluster of seven, by the way. And we have a delay in ignition. And it sort of ignites in stages. It ignites the center first and then the outsides. So I need to figure out real plumes, because we don't have real plume configurations for these engines just yet. So I'll try and take a look at that. Uh, things that the mod are missing are uh, so the solar panels, those uh, distinctive solar panels that it has, and also docking port. So right now we can't refuel this using a tanker. Not that we have a tank. Well, I could have configured this as a tanker version, but uh, right now it's configured strictly as the ITS ship version. Uh, for the tanker version, I would have to add more fuel to it, but I've left some room in the tank uh, for additional stuff, so for, like the lead ballast. So we could put more fuel in it and just use this model if we had a docking port. Of course, you could uh, slap a docking port on it yourself if you'd like. Uh, that's not a big problem. Though, you'll have to make sure you'll somehow extend the docking port out. It'll have to go on the side like this, and you'll have to have like a piston have it go out, because otherwise it's not going to pass this area here. Uh, we probably need thrusters in the back. Right now we've got RCS thrusters here, 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 here. You see them here and here. And we've got downward facing ones. What we really don't have are forward facing ones and backward facing ones. Those are important because remember this has to be able to dock with the tanker. And so either the tanker or this one has to have those. I mean the other one can just sit still or something. The tanker at least needs to have those. So we need thrusters uh, pushing it back and forth. Also that will be helpful to sell the fuel down for the main engines because right now they still require ullage and we need RCS thrusters to do that. The RCS thrusters here, by the way, have the same strength as the ones on the first stage. Um, so four kilonewtons each. And we're getting ready for engine shutdown here because smart parts will shut that down uh, with 10% of the fuel remaining. And there we go. That was 10%, 18 seconds apparently. Okay. And Ignition. Got a little torch there. Uh, now I've allowed the center engines to be on so that KOS can use the center engine gimbling. I don't think it'd be real happy with just using the RCS thrusters, though it might be. Uh, just to be safe on this particular run, uh, I'll let KOS use the gimbling on the, on the Raptor surface engines to control it. Now that's another thing that we don't really have and I don't expect to have either uh, by my own configuration or by the mod itself. And that's the variable thrust in the vacuum engines to do the control. Supposedly uh, the engines can independently throttle in order to help with control but there's no practical way to manage that on the fly. In other words, I wouldn't be able to tell KOS to throttle the engines like that, I don't think. and. Uh, and doing it manually would be a pain too. There, there is uh, engine group controllers and in theory I could have like six sliders and individually tune them but that would be very coarse and not very good for actually controlling the vessel. So yeah, here we are and if I had told the script to do so it would be fine to have this roll upright. be a good time to do that. So the body flaps, um, uh, I can show you, uh, let me turn on RCS so you can see the RCS thrusters do work. But you'll notice the body flaps are not responding right now. And that's because they're basically on and off. Oh, I think I've uh, annoyed KOS here. Uh, let me turn off the RCS. Let it just use the gimbling to figure itself out. I threw it off and so now it has to settle itself down. 
Uh, they're only active on yaw, uh, on pitch, sorry. And they are either on or off. So here's it being deployed, retracted. You can deploy both of them like that. Helpful going through the atmosphere, but that relies on this going through the atmosphere the wet, right way around, which it won't right now. Now, like I said, this is a work in progress, so if you guys can think of any way to improve this, uh, the RO configurations, you can tell me. Uh, don't bug the modder about anything. Uh, let that go at its own pace. Some things I can improve, uh, like the heat shielding and stuff like that. So we can do a lot, and of course, uh, you can add the docking port yourself to handle that part of the mission. Um, Yep, so it's a pretty good model. I uh, did see some other models of the ITS, and I tried a few out. Um, th this is, I think, the smoothest that I've seen. And of course, I already use uh, KK Launcher's Falcon 9, so I was naturally inclined to go with this anyway. Now you'll notice that the script throttles down when we hit uh, high levels of acceleration to make sure that the crew has it a little bit uh, calmer in there. Though it would be better if it did that smoothly, but in general rockets don't have smooth throttling. They, uh, a lot of rockets have like discrete throttling. They go from one setting to another. Uh, though I believe that, uh, of course, the SpaceX engines will have smooth throttling. Here we can see that we have a little bit of a surplus as we get to orbit and that's good because we would like to be able to deorbit as well. I guess I'll go through that just so you can see what happens. I know what's going to happen but it'll be good just to see how it goes and what we need to fix. Now I just went to the map screen and back and that means that where the center of the screen is is the center of the mass. So the center of mass is around here-ish, which is what the problem is. And you know, on the one hand I would like to dump the 300 tons of lead ballast we have in there. That would probably make going back down easier um, and slowing down easier, but that lead ballast uh, well, it, it shouldn't be pulling the center mass back. If anything, it would pull it forward. So, yeah. Okay, here we're about to get to orbit. And there we have it. Engine shut down. 288 by 234. Our remaining delta V is 472 meters per second. And that's with the 300 tons of cargo. Of course, this has much more delta V if it's not carrying any cargo. Okay, so let's have RCS on and RCS on and uh, have Smart ASS turn us retrograde. These are four kilonewton little RCS thrusters, and you might go, well, I want something stronger, and that might help through the atmosphere, but. Uh, it's worth noting that it does consume fuel, it does consume the methane and oxygen, so right now it's uh, being good about it, not using too much. But at full blast, these thrusters could use a bit more. So uh, if you're in 1.1.3 and you don't edit, uh, basically the edit on the, on the original configuration is uh, on the ship and on the RCS thrusters that are on the first stage, you have to change it from module RCS FX to module RCS, otherwise I didn't get it to work. And also it's probably helpful to take out the effects section because those effects don't exist in 1.1.3. So the EFFECTS effects section and then the letters FX off of the module RCS are basically why I deleted in the original configurations to make it work in 1.1.3. Um, in 1.2 there's no problem I don't think. Uh, though it's hard for me to test in 1.2 because realism overhaul hasn't been updated for 1.2 yet. Okay so but uh, I'm, sh I'm sure uh, all the basics will work just fine in 1.2 so I don't anticipate needing to change the configuration which I will offer in the video description by the way that's the point of this. 
I will link the configuration and the original mod in the video description uh, for your enjoyment or uh, headaches. Probably more headaches, I'll have to warn you. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Let us now. Okay, well, I've taken too long. I talked too much. You can see the fuel is unsettled. So I'm gonna do the alternate version. It'd be nice to have backward facing thrusters to sell the fuel down, but we don't have them. So I'm going to wiggle it a bit to sell the fuel down. You'll see eventually they go all right, and then I'll turn back retrograde now. Now, of course, without backward facing uh, RCS thrusters, we can't use RCS to deorbit. So we'll just have to go with this. I should probably turn off the the center engines, but anyway, there we go. It doesn't take too much to deorbit. Go back prograde. And that periapsis, it might be a little bit low, but um, this kind of vehicle would often hit that kind of periapsis, especially if it's returning from like Mars or something. So, I mean, there's hardly anything like uh, the severity of a Mars return. I haven't actually added food, water, and oxygen in the configuration. Tack life support puts that much in automatically. And like I said, uh, you can't really add it to to the system manually if you want to have cryogenic tanks in the back because those tanks don't have space for food, water, and oxygen. Tack life support happens to create its own little food, water, and oxygen categories automatically. I guess I could add those in, but it'd be nice to be able to place them somewhere definite. There is, I, I don't believe there is a descent mode or something like that that could help us here. Uh, that would shift the center of mass. That would be good. Uh, I should look at how the the descent mode works in, in the other realism, with the other realism overall capsules, and maybe I could create some sort of descent mode for it. Okay, well, uh, let's try and hold uh, shuttle-like re-entry posture. I don't know if I want to extend those those flaps. I'll extend the flaps when, if it seems like we're having trouble uh, holding orientation. Okay, so we are in the atmosphere, uh, approaching 131 kilometers in altitude now. You can see the vessel mass slightly dropping, and that's because of RCS use. Now, in theory, this shouldn't have ablator in the first place. That's not supposed to be ablator. That's supposed to be a permanent heat shield. I don't think it's supposed to peel off like ablator does. Um, I don't think it's supposed to work that way. But the question is whether we can have proper heat shielding on this and make it work? It's a good question. I mean, then of course there's also the matter of whether it can actually slow down. It's still not doing it yet. Rather than be brakes, maybe they really are just to help with uh, holding the pitch. Let's take a look at that. You can see that uh, our pitch, no, we're already using quite a lot of our pitch authority. If we take in the brakes, do we use a lot more? Do we use a lot less when we extend the brakes? Or the flaps? No, I think uh, they're not doing a whole lot, are they? Not at this uh, altitude anyway. And we're already close to having pitch issues here. Ablation is happening by the way. You'll see ablator melting away. You might have thought 16,000 was a lot, but this is a huge, huge vehicle. Okay, here we go. It's actually, I mean, because it's uh, tail heavy um, and doesn't have enough mass in the front, it's flipping like this. And it ends up going tail first. Well, obviously that's not what you want. The heat shielding is of course currently mostly configured for stock, so it's no big surprise that it's not in any good condition for realism overhaul. 
I'll take a good look at what kind of numbers we have on the space shuttle. Hopefully that might be enough, though, you know, there's 10 times, well, it's carrying the 300 tons of cargo, but uh, even empty, it's like three times the mass of the shuttle, and quite a lot bigger, I mean, just physically, the diameter is much larger. Going engine first is definitely not how SpaceX would like to do it because, well, that's the delicate part that you were trying to save. But the engines sure do have good heat tolerance, don't they? Look at them. They're not even glowing red right now. Nor are the body flaps. Um, so maybe I should take the heat tolerance from the body flaps and extend it to the rest of the body, but they might be cool just because they're back well, no, they're right in front, aren't they? Mm. Shouldn't they be getting toasty? Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it might be a good start to copy the heat tolerance off of the body flaps, huh? Still, the engines and these body flaps seem to be seem to be all right they're not glowing red or anything wonder if they'll survive if uh, the rest of it blows up okay around 72 kilometers and we're about to lose a blader and that was quite immediate wasn't it I well there, there are bits but they got catapulted. I think those are the engines and the body flaps, but they're uh, they're leaving the scene at high speed. I wonder, um, can we can we see them? I don't know if we can jump to them. No, I mean it's in the atmosphere. I don't think we can actually jump to them. But yeah, they're uh, they've been launched a bit. Okay, so. Yes, still a work in progress, but I'll, I'll link the RO configuration if you want to try it, since everybody always asks me for these things. And I'll continue to work on it and update the file as necessary. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.